So I was already planning on doing this video and then I read a long list of stuff on the nine front mailing list. So I'll bang out this video now. As I've shown in previous videos, I tried to use nine front, a fork of plan nine from Bell Labs, not only as it was intended by its creators, but also to do things that weren't um, really thought of back in the day, uh, like bending the concept of the CPU server to go beyond serving CPU power to other resources like using Raspberry Pis for sensors, or using computers with extra networking ports as routers. Since I tend to bend my development systems to the point of breaking, and then have to rebuild and reinstall, I decided to split my grid into two. So now I have a second grid to be my stable production environment. That way I don't lose control of my light bulbs when tearing down my development grid. And so far, this is all fairly modern off-the-shelf stuff. I'm using that little NAS thing uh, that I did a review on as the file server, and the little thin T computer. Um, I have that set up to Pixie Boot as a diskless terminal. And for now, I have three Raspberry Pis, uh, three Bs, uh, set up around the house with various uh, things attached to them. So first off, to touch on a point that came up on the mailing list, uh, I'm doing this video right here um, on Linux running DrawTerm. Uh, I do have my terminal computer on, but I run it with a vertical monitor, so video capture would be kind of a hassle. So I'm technically running here on the uh, on Central, which is my file server. And I have stats running, uh, collecting stats from all the machines here. Um, and one of them is this one, the Thin T, that's the terminal. Now, the way Stats gets this information is the same way you get RCPU and other CPU stuff, um, or CPU server stuff, and that is by uh, running a couple listeners. So by default, um, by default, anything configured as a CPU server will automatically um, run anything not commented out in the, um, and uh, let's see, it's RC bin. So there's in RC bin, there's a service directory here. And anything with an exclamation point in it's sort of like the, the version of being commented out for this. So there's two of them that run. Um, that's these two here. Um, this one basically is just a trampoline to get access to the file system. And this one here is for basically running remote commands on a CPU server. So, however, um, term RC, which is run when terminals boot, doesn't do that. So, in CPU RC, down here, yeah, it'll run listen on this, which is uh, an environmental variable that holds that um, RC bin services. And if you're running an auth server, it also runs extra stuff for running the authentication. But that's not the case in TermRC. There it is. So TermRC does not run listen because the expectation, at least back in the day, that these were very minimal systems and you wouldn't want to like, you know, remotely run commands on them. So what I ended up doing was using the uh, config directory and just telling it. So since it's a terminal, it'll the term you know the basic term RC will look for a config system name term RC file to run, and I literally just copied and pasted those uh, two things over that I needed from um, CPU RC. Matter of fact, I. Had, I could have actually put that in here instead of setting an environmental variable, but I literally just copied and pasted it. Uh, but the effect means that I can now uh, use RCP to access thin. So we can see here if I do something really intensive, let's uh, undo. So we can see here that the uh, the thin T computer is the one actually doing all the the processing to run that. Um, 
Central's doing some networking stuff because all this is routed through uh, Central because that's what I'm actually, this uh, draw term is actually connected to. But yeah, really, really simple. Um, just copy and paste a couple things and you can now get your terminal to uh, run like a CPU server in a way. Basically, all it has to do is open up a couple listeners and uh, wait to run uh, commands remotely. So while I'm running here on the terminal, um, let's show off some uh, grid stuff that I could do on my little grid here. Um, so this will be pretty basic. I have some other stuff planned um, for tying all this stuff kind of together in the future. Uh, but for now I have three Raspberry Pis scattered around my house. And with the uh, latest release of Ninefront, Wi-Fi now works on the Pis. So I'm stuck using Pi 3Bs, but I hear it runs much better on the 4Bs. So anyway, I have, I know I have two of the Raspberry Pis have those SCD40 CO2 temperature humidity sensors. So let's uh, go ahead and import them. So I can do, let's check first if I'm using in for anything. Nope. All right. So we'll do import from lab pi. Do that. And then import of another one in the bedroom. So I'm importing from this system, from this part of their file of their namespace on that system into mine. I'll call it bed. Little bit of lag over these three Bs on their Wi Fi. All right, let's uh, have two directories. Let's see what's in in lab. So I can read the sensors here for the lab. So I got my 1084 parts per million CO2, uh, 27.6 degrees Celsius, and humidity in here and I could do the same for the bedroom one so a little bit more co2 in there but basically the same so I also have another Pi that has the um, sense hat which is a thing sold by the Raspberry Pi Foundation it's a little whole board that goes right on top of the Pi it has a, an LED grid and a bunch of other sensors on it so and I recently finally did my um, file system for that. Still working on it to get some extra features. That is on the sense hat pi. Now it's sense hat uh, here. All right. And so it has um, two sensors on it. So one's a humidity and temperature, one's a pressure and temperature, and then it has a nine axis um, accelerometer, gyro, and mag, and then it has a, an eight by eight LED grid. But I can read those values out of there right now. So let's see. Oh, it's definitely warmer downstairs where that one is. Uh, let's see what the humidity is. Oh, a little less humid too. And I can even get the air pressure in like hectopascals, I think. So even as air pressure. Uh, another one I have running on this grid is I moved my uh, light bulb control over for the Wiz light bulbs. So I could even bring those over to the terminal. So that would be on centrals running those. The Mount Wiz. So you can see that one's a little bit faster because that's all on the wired network. Uh, oh, actually it didn't work. Maybe I'm grabbing it from the wrong place. It might be, I might have it mounted. Actually I can check. Uh, change directory config. Let's see how I have it set up on there. 
Oh, yep, I actually have it mounted in N. So let's change that to N. There they are. I don't have a camera running in here so you could watch me flip the light bulbs different colors, but I can like, uh, I can read them. So let's see, let's read lab. That's the bulb in here. It should be, oops, oh. And whiz. So yeah, it's off right now. Um, arm lamp number two is on though. So I can check that. So, yep, it's on, it has a temperature rating. That's the little color temperature. Um, well, I think that might be a bogus one. I'm not sure if I'm using the scene ID or the temperature on it. It's running at full blast. So yeah, there we go. I can pull in all these different, different things, whether they be actual sensors or some sort of server controlling light bulbs over the Wi-Fi, and I can bring them all into the network here now. So fellow Ninefront user Halfwit has a first draft of a port of Inferno's registry system. Uh, and I'll have some links down below to that. Uh, I hope to get that or something like it running so I have more user-friendly way of um, you know, mounting resources and stuff. Um, right now I just have to know, you know where what device has what and where it's mounted. So as you can see, if I don't remember exactly where it is, it's, um, it's I won't find it. Um, so some of this I've already kind of automated actually. So let's go back to config here. Um, let's see, the lab has some of it. Lab. So when it starts up, it'll run this script here. And it'll fork off, bind the uh, various sensors I have on it. So this one has a GPS sensor. I mostly just use it as a well, I haven't configured it right now, but previously I had it set up as a as a time server because you can get time from the GPS satellites. So I also have the uh, the SCD40 and then one of those LCDs that I've demonstrated before. Um, but in this case here, um, I set up listeners. So since I'm just testing it right now, I'm running just listen one command instead of the the listen one or the straight listen. And um, what they'll do is set up listeners on these specific ports. And if something connects, it'll export just a specific piece of the file system. And so this works sort of like the previous one there. So I can do something like just use 9FS, which is a, a script used for dialing other nine front systems. I can dial lab pi on that port 9040 and mount it in N. So now if I look in uh, N, it has those same um, files for the SCD40 sensor. So eventually I want to have some NDB-like system that can store and query services advertised on the grid. Um, but for now, this is just a basic setup I kind of got going this weekend. So in the future, I want to replace the plain open WRT Wi-Fi router I have on this grid right now um, with one running nine front, but uh, Wi-Fi drivers are a lot of work. So that's still, still a work in progress. Uh, I'd also like a dedicated CPU server in the traditional sense. Um, so I don't have to rely so much on, you know, using the file server to do number crunching or be sort of uh, playing around on the grid. Um, so future additions to the grid should be, I want to stick to trying to do off the shelf stuff. I've demonstrated a lot of sort of, you know, my previous development grid uses a lot of, you know, hardware I was able to get used, um, and a few other, you know, oddball pieces of equipment. But this one here, I want to sort of demonstrate, um, you know, what you could do with just sort of off the shelf stuff you could buy right now, um, without having to hunt around, um, so yeah, if anyone has any uh, interesting ideas for things to add to this grid, uh, let me know in the comments. And as usual, have fun.